Hey everyone, my name's Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a really interesting technique to paint penguins uh, like this. Now I'm going to try to make this video a little bit different than my other videos. I think I'll try to break it into something like two and a half parts. So in the first part, I'm going to show you how to paint baby penguins like this. Then in the second part, I'll show you how to do the adult penguins. And then in the third part, I'll show you how to combine all these together uh, into a scene. And as far as difficulty, I think this whole project here is suitable for beginners. Uh, even if you're totally new, I think you'll find these techniques really useful. So I'm going to start out here with a blank watercolor paper texture. And in this case, I'm using the St. Petersburg texture. And for the brushes, uh, I'm going to be able to do all of this with the regular watercolor brush kit. And I'll put links to all of these materials in the description below. Now in the first part here, um, we're going to do the baby penguins. And there's no sketch necessary for this. Uh, you could do it, but I really want to encourage you to try it without a sketch, uh, because I think it's more fun and more spontaneous uh, when you do it this way. So I'm going to select a layer underneath the paper texture, just like you normally would. And I'm going to grab the abstract round brush. And for the color, I think it's a good idea to uh, shift the hue over to somewhere kind of around blue, and then choose a middle gray color like that. But it doesn't have to be perfect because we can adjust this later on. Now using the abstract round, I'll just sketch out some rough kind of penguin shapes like this. And I'm lifting the brush off the, um, the iPad quite a bit because I want it to have this kind of dab texture. So this is basically the penguin texture. It's sort of like, I don't know, a pill shaped, but the bottom is a bit fatter. Now after I've done that first pass, I'm going to choose a lighter gray and just go over it again, kind of towards the middle. Next, I want to grab the water blender brush and maybe around 30%. Uh, I'll just mix these up and just try to give them a really interesting kind of fluffy texture. But I'm going to keep trying to push them into that sort of uh, pill shape so they still look like penguins. There we go. That looks really good. And next, I want to add some uh, darker areas, some darker details here. And I think the best way to do that is with the freehand selection tool. And first, I'll make a selection that just covers kind of the top of each one of these penguins. Then I'll circle back. I'll feather that out quite a bit, maybe around like 40%. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just darken the top like this. Now after that, I'm going to focus on the bottoms here. And I'm going to grab the selection tool again. Uh, basically the same thing with the freehand selection tool, but this time I'm going to make two selections, just like this. And I'm going to do it to each penguin. There we go, and I'll feather that one out, but maybe a little bit less. Hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll darken that area as well. And the point of this is to have the head of the penguin uh, pretty dark, and then two sort of dark splotches down by where the feet are, as just a kind of suggestion of that's the feet. Next, I can kind of define uh, the wings of the penguin, and I'm going to use the selection tool for that. And what I'll do is I'll make a selection that just sort of curves around like this, circles back around the bottom, does pretty much the same thing on the other side, and then connects back. Now when I go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and darken that area, I create kind of a shadow, just sort of suggesting that there's a wing there, and that's the main body. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to each one. Now I've intentionally done it uh, kind of slightly different for each one, and that's because I don't want them to all look exactly the same. Uh, so I just kind of shuffled it around. Uh, no real tricks there. I am trying to imagine a little bit of 3D, like maybe that one is tipping and that one is more head on, uh, but it doesn't have to be like an exact science or anything like that. Now after that, I can add some detail to the face. So what I'm going to do is select pure white. I'm going to go to the fine liner pen. Actually, maybe not pure white, maybe just a little bit darker, something just a very light gray like that. And I'm going to do the faces. And the face is really easy. I'm just going to make like two little circles like this. And then at the bottom, I'll sort of loop down and connect them. Just like that. And that's good enough for the face. And I'm going to go through and do the, uh, each one the same way. But obviously, if the one is turned a little bit, I'll sort of foreshorten that pattern, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect to be convincing. Next, I'm going to use the water blender, and on each one of these, 
I'm gonna try to pull down the bottom of the face and just sort of blur the bottom edge like this. And also while I'm at it, I'm gonna pull out the shadow just uh, in a few places. Not, I don't wanna get too carried away and make that line totally disappear, but I wanna make it look a little bit softer. There we go. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing to each one. Next, I'm gonna grab the eraser tool and I'm gonna sort of cut down all these soft edges and just shape them a little bit more, um, kind of, they're very abstract right now, so I'm gonna try to make the outline of the silhouette a little bit more concrete, just like this. And I'll do this process to each one. And it's not just like a clear cut where exactly you have to erase, but try to keep in mind that there is kind of a neck in a shoulders area. And then the bottom edge here can be kind of rounded around. Then maybe I can put a little kind of dimple there for the feet. There we go. And I'll just try to shape each one sort of roughly like that, but also they're each individual penguins, so it's okay if they're all a little bit different. So these are looking really good. And um, I've really kind of sharpened up the outline there, but I like to soften it up kind of after that just to make them look a little bit more fluffy. So I'll start with the middle one here. And to sort of fluff them, I'll use the water blender brush, but at a pretty big size, maybe even 25, 30%, something like that. And I'll just sort of tap along the boundary anywhere where I wanna kind of break up that outline and make it look kind of fuzzy. And especially along the bottoms there, just to kind of obscure any uh, areas around the feet uh, because it's less detail that we have to add later on. There we go. These are almost done. Uh, I want to add some detail on the face next and I think it's good to do that on another layer just above them and all the detail will be a pretty dark bluish color sort of a similar tone that we did the bodies with just a darker version of that and I want to grab the uh, fine liner pen brush and at a really small size, I'll add some details in the face. Now the eyes are sort of almond shaped, I guess, something like this. And I'll do them both like that. And the beak, it's okay if it's really small, just like this is okay. And then while I'm at it, I'll go down to the feet and just make a little scribble and I'll adjust this later on. And I'm gonna do the same process to each one. There we go. Now to soften up the feet, I'm gonna grab the water blender, maybe around 15%. Uh, I'll just kind of blur it just like that. And then just kind of mix it around just to make it so there's kind of a little dark point there, just to barely kind of suggest a, an abstract foot. Next, I'm just gonna merge all the layers for these, both of those layers onto one and I wanna move them together so it'll fit on my iPad a little bit better. So I'll use the freehand selection tool and then just use the arrow tool to kind of move them a little bit closer. Now as a kind of optional uh, finishing touch, you can add a slight hard outline. And the way I do that is I'll make another layer above them. Again, I'll use that same dark color I used on the eyes and the beak, but I'm gonna grab the HB pencil brush and at a really, really small size, I'll just kind of add an outline on that extra layer just in a few areas, not everywhere, but just wherever I think it kind of could use a little bit of a harder edge. And just like my usual technique when I do an outline uh, on a separate layer like this, I'll always set it to multiply, lower it to zero, and then slowly raise it back up until it's just kind of visible enough that I can barely see it there. There we go, I think that looks pretty good and I can merge those layers together. And there we go, these baby penguins are all done and when I print it out, it looks like this. Now in the next part of the tutorial, I wanna show you how to paint the adult penguins and they're a lot different uh, than the babies so I think it's a good idea to use a sketch for those because they have some more kind of uh, proportions and details that matter. So what I'm gonna do is place in a sketch of some penguins and if you want this sketch, it's for free. and You can download it in the description. And uh, I'll just turn off my existing illustration, make a new layer, 
uh, and just paste in that sketch up there. So here's what the penguin sketches look like. And I think I want to use, I think I'll use this penguin. So I'm going to scale this uh, sketch and sort of center that one. Now, there's some other penguins on the sketch, so I'll just go ahead and delete those. So I'll select those using the selection tool. I'll select that layer and just clear it. Now, like I usually do, I'll set the sketch to multiply and then lower it to a point where I can just barely see it. Uh, it's useful, but it doesn't get in the way too much. I think that's okay. Uh, hopefully you can see that on the video. Now to start painting the adult penguin, uh, let's make a new layer underneath the paper texture. And I'm gonna use that same kind of a medium blue gray color that we used on the baby penguins. And I'll use the abstract round brush again. And I'll just sort of rough out the body of the penguin like this. I'm not so worried about the head because that's gonna be pure black. So I'll paint that with the fine liner later on. I'm just focusing on the main body. Then just like I did before, I'll select a lighter version of that gray and just kind of focus it on the tummy area. After that, I can grab the water blender again. Same size as before, maybe around 35%. And I'll just kind of mix this up a little bit just to give it an interesting kind of watery uh, texture. Next, I'm gonna go in there with the eraser. You know, I think at a pretty big size, like 35%. And I'll just kind of clean it up down here just so it matches the sketch a little bit better. And then also up here, wherever it goes beyond the sketch, I'll just sort of cut it back a little bit. Now for the rest of the details, I'm gonna use black. So I'll select, uh, maybe not pure black, maybe something like a dark, dark kind of blue gray color. And I'll use the fine liner pen. And I'm gonna make this on a different layer above the body of the penguin. And I'll just sort of start by outlining uh, the sketch here, wherever the black details are. And after I've got that outline, just to save time, I can just drop in that solid color to fill that out really quickly. Now that turned out pretty good, so I think I can just merge those two layers together. Next, I'm gonna grab the water blender again, maybe a little bit of a smaller size, and I'll just sort of soften up the boundary and just make it look like this was sort of painted a little bit wet on wet, uh, and the colors are just sort of mixing together. And the trick with this is not always to pull it out like that. Uh, it's actually kind of to follow the, the line of the sketch, and just sort of trace the outline, and that'll make a very soft kind of non-directional fuzziness. Now on a lot of penguins, uh, adult penguins, they have some kind of orange or, or colored area up towards the neck. Uh, I know there's a lot of different penguins in the world and I'm not an expert about that, but a lot of the pictures I saw had this kind of orange area. So I'll try to replicate that. So I'll make a new layer above the body of the penguin and I'll select a orange kind of saturated orange yellow color like that. I'll use the abstract round and just sort of dab it in there like that. After that, I can use the water blender, and just kind of push that around. And because it's on its own layer, I don't have to worry about messing up the uh, main body of the penguin. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. I do wanna add a little bit of an ombre effect. So I'll grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and just make a selection, just any kind of random area there, and I'll feather it out. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and shift the hue so it makes it a little bit more orange, and then I'll saturate it. And if you want to, uh, you can use the eraser and kind of clean it up a little bit, just sort of uh, to keep those edges a little bit defined. There we go, that looks really good. So I'll merge those layers together. Now the face detail is so easy on these penguins. Uh, what I recommend doing is adding a little bit of shading to the beak first. So I'll use the freehand selection tool and just kind of select the bottom of the beak like that. I'll lighten that up a little bit. Then the top, I'll make a selection like this and feather it out. And this will be sort of like a highlight on the beak. Hue saturation and brightness and I'll brighten that one. There we go. Now for the eye, I'm gonna do that with white. So I'll make another layer above this, just in case I mess it up, I'm not working on that same layer. I'll select pure white and the fine liner pen brush and add a pretty small size. I'll do the eye kind of in this area, but penguins have complicated eyes. They're a little bit scary. So I think just to keep it simple, I'll do a closed eye like this. 
and I'll kind of use the arrow tool to position that a little bit better. And I'm just going to move it around until it kind of feels right. And also, uh, I want to use same pen, same size to do a little bit of a highlight on the beak there. Okay, that looks really good. It's a little bit too bright, so I'll sort of lower the transparency of that. And there we go, I think that looks good enough, so I'll merge those together. Now as a finishing touch for the adult penguin, uh, it might be a good idea to add some highlights. So first, I'm gonna use the selection tool, the freehand selection tool, and make a kind of a highlight along the back, because penguins are a little bit shiny, a little bit glossy. So I'll feather that one. Hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll brighten that. And then on the belly, I think I'll make a highlight as well because it's it looks a little bit too kind of uh, gray or dirty. So I'll make a selection like that, feather it out. And because this is like, this kind of gray is a sensitive color. And if I just use the normal hue, saturation, and brightness, it's likely to just get blown out and lose all the detail. So a trick that I like to do, it's sort of optional, I guess, is to use the curves tool instead for brightening. And all you have to do is just move the bottom end up and you can see it raises the brightness in a much more uh, softer, nicer way than the regular uh, brightness control, which just kind of can really screw it up sometimes. And this is almost done. I think I can turn off the sketch now. And one thing I wanna do is add some more kind of shading down here to kind of suggest where the feet are. So I'll do that with the selection tool again and make two selections like that. One foot, two foot, feather it out hue, saturation, and brightness, and just darken that. And there we go, that's how I paint an adult penguin. And now here's what it looks like when I print it out. So far in this video, I showed you how to paint the baby penguins and then the adult penguins. And in the last part of the video here, I'm gonna show you how to combine those together into a scene. So here's our adult penguin, and I'm gonna turn on the layer for the baby penguins there. And uh, what I wanna do is move the baby penguins on a layer above the adult penguin. And I'll use the arrow tool to kind of move those over. And I think I'll kind of put one of the babies in front of it. So let's see how that looks. There we go. And I think I'll change the size of these a little bit. So I'll use the freehand selection tool and just select these two. And I'll shrink them a little bit. And then I'll just kind of move these around and, and sort of try to create a nice arrangement. Now this could be a really nice scene in its own right, but if you want to, there's a really cool way you can add a background to this. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna make sure it's behind the adult and the baby penguins. And I'll choose, again, a kind of bluish gray color, but a much lighter one. And using that abstract round brush at a pretty large size, I'll just sort of make some random swipes in the background. Next, I'll grab the water blender and at almost the largest size, I'll just kind of swipe this background around. Now it might not show up so clearly on the video, but it's a very, very light kind of a cloudy sky effect in the background. Next, I wanna select pure white. Then I'm gonna go to the, uh, a brush that I haven't used very often. It's the mist brush. And at the largest size, I'll just tap it around. And it sort of looks like snow, kind of like snowy dappled sky like that. Let me zoom in here. Hopefully you can see that on the video. Um, I'll try to mess with the contrast to get it, but my camera is not so great <laughs> with the dynamic range, but there we go. Just has a nice kind of snowy texture. Next, I wanna add the look that there's kind of like a distant mountain off way off in the background. And I can do that with the selection tool set to freehand. And I've got that background layer selected here. I'll select over along the horizon like that. Then I'll sort of trace out the silhouette of a distant mountain like that. Then I can go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just darken it. Now, if it's too dark, uh, you can use the water blender brush again at a pretty large size and just kind of knock the top off a little bit. And that'll give the impression that it's getting obscured by some clouds and also kind of make it look a little lighter. Then as a finishing touch, I'll select pure white again use that same mist brush and just add another layer of snow. And lastly, I'll merge all three layers, the background, the adult penguin, and the baby penguins onto one layer. And I wanna cut it into a kind of oval shape. So 
I'll use the selection tool set to freehand and I'll make a selection like this, kind of like a snow globe, I guess. Then I'll go back across and I'll do copy and paste. It'll cut that out and paste it on a different layer. So now we have these two layers. And if I turn off the original one and deselect it, we're left with just this kind of dome shape and all that extra watercolor along the edges is gone. And there we go, this scene is all done and I love the way it printed out. Now, I really believe that this technique is suitable for everyone, even for beginners. So if it looks intimidating, uh, try to give it a try first because you'll be surprised uh, at how easy this is. Uh, penguins are not hard to paint. They don't have proportions like people do. Uh, if you're a little bit wrong, it, you don't really notice it in the final result. So just give it a try and I think you'll really be satisfied with it. And then on one final note here, uh, this technique is not just suitable for penguins or fluffy things. You can use this strategy to paint almost anything. And I think I'm gonna expand on this in future videos because it's a really promising technique. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching, uh, liking, subscribing. Your support means so much to me. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.